Hey guys, so we are firmly into the new year, into 2024, and as you can see, I'm all pinked out. Like today, I'm just feeling pink. My notebook is pink, my outfit is pink, and I'm all pink, although my nails are green. It doesn't matter. But for today's video, I thought I'd share my um, 2023 annual budget recap because yesterday I spent a whole two hours going through all of my numbers because I wasn't trusting what my Excel was spewing out but I rejiggled all the numbers looked at everything and I was like yes this really does look like what my 2023 felt like to me so I do have my trusted notepad here I'm gonna go in here and I'm also going to be doing um sharing some screenshots of my 2023 annual budget plan so you can see what i have projected and obviously where i am now that we are in 2024 so if i start off first with what my annual um income i was expecting i actually thought i was going to bring in over 100k for sure i knew that but i literally was like if i could do 100 100 and 112 k that would be great because i think that's what it came to about 112 and 500 or thereabouts that what it came to because this included my nine to five income plus my bonus that i get from my nine to five then my rental properties and then my small business and when i say small business i mean really really small because i've got a small etsy shop where i sell budget um trackers that you can purchase for yourself and the link is always in the description bar below then i have a website edulidreamer.com where i write blog posts on travel lifestyle fashion and everything in between and i make money from that as well so really really tiny but my goal was to bring in at least over 125k i'm sorry 112k or thereabouts and I was able to do that i actually wrote down the numbers i was just like oh my gosh i couldn't believe it when i finished like punching down everything so just my looking at my rental income together with my nine to five income that brought me to around 115k that's what i brought in all over 2023 that was quite surprising but also not surprising because i did end up buying a third rental property which meant it added on to the income that was coming in so the 115k that i'm talking about here is all pre-tax so you know if you're in the uk once his majesty's folks mh HMRC is done with you. That 125K doesn't feel like 125K. It feels more like 50, 60K. Okay? So just bear that in mind. But I was really, really happy to see that. And definitely for my work, the reason it was higher was because I asked for a pay rise, which I got. And then I also changed roles i applied for a higher position in a new team and that came with its own pay rise so that all added to um my pay going up obviously if this is something you're thinking about in 2024 you can definitely do that that's something i know i'm thinking about i have my annual review coming up in two months time so obviously i'll be sitting down with my manager and talking about the monies it's not something that i'm comfortable with if i am honest for i think the last 12 15 years of my career i have just been like oh, okay so they say that my pay rise is three percent oh it's okay it's good and i've had managers who will be like you know for your age you know it's it's okay to be on this salary and over the last couple of months i've been thinking to myself my age has got nothing to do with i'm doing the work I am doing above and beyond so I think that should be reflected in my pay so I am slowly I'm not there yet but I'm slowly slowly starting to get comfortable with talking about money and asking for more money because I know I put in a lot of work and I deserve it so that is where I am with that then with my rental properties um, I'm not sure if this year because you know i use management company and they tell me oh uh rents go up every single year blah 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 but i 
I'm human, you know, I'm not a business first, I'm human first, but I also know I need to treat this as a business, so I'm not really sure yet. I don't want to increase the rents ridiculously because obviously we are all in a pinch right now so and as much as i know people always need a home i still need to remember the human factor that i feel like is my downfall when it comes to this property business but i'm still human so i'm i'm not sure yet what i'm gonna do with that but i have a projection of where i think i want to see rental income be at so that is something as well but then then the final part of this is the um business income which I honestly have not been making a lot over the last couple of years compared to like 2016 to 2019 where I was really bringing in almost like a thousand pounds a month from my side hustles, my blog and my Etsy. But I don't know. I don't know. I'm just not there anymore. And maybe there's some things I need to do this year to bring myself back to that. But I'm just not active enough on the blog and i need to spend more time on my etsy to actually increase the revenue there but anyway that's where we are so my goal was about 112,000 um for 2023 i definitely went above that and i came close to um 125 which is great right so that is with the income that i was projecting and what i actually brought in then if i start looking at my main bills so i have a mortgage on my home and my mortgage changed last year um did it change last year no it changed the year before that but essentially what i made a decision last year that i was going to be paying 900 pounds every single month towards my mortgage now my mortgage itself is 887 or thereabouts and i make sure i round up so that i pay 900 pounds every single month and i did that and according to my uh, mortgage provider i paid 10,801.93 pence towards my mortgage in 2023 so this is every single month i'm um upping it up to 900 pounds and then there was a month where i paid one pound and 93 pence more council tax so my local taxes that was under 1500 my home insurance was just over a thousand pounds life insurance this was um just under a thousand pounds uh, my utilities surprisingly although i think my numbers may be slightly skewed it said it was just under 950 but then we had gone through that um government scheme where they were giving us back some money so i'm not really sure this is accurate but that's what my tracker has um i had a membership that i paid about six 620 pounds i cancelled that now gym membership i cancelled my gym membership i think after the summer so i spent about over 220 pounds my internet was over 400 pounds um for the whole year uh, my spa membership was over 335 pounds travel insurance was 216 my netflix 181 pounds surprisingly my window cleaner i don't know if this is accurate because my window cleaner comes every six weeks so it definitely is more than 45 pounds because i pay him 15 pounds to do all the windows just like to clean them up um so I changed my budget tracker a little bit so where I used to have a line item for window cleaner I changed it to just grouping it all into housing so I don't think this is accurate TV license 159 but I hear TV license is actually going up I don't know if it's worth it because I don't watch live TV so I don't know maybe I might need to cancel this uh, Avios membership was 144 my mobile surprisingly was under 600 pounds um, for the whole year Spotify was under 170 my second mobile was under 180 Equifax um, under over 130 and then plum fees 32 pounds essentially so I actually spent um, over 18,700 on my main bills so pre-tax I brought in about 125 and of that I sent 18 over 18,000 towards my um, my main bills and then when it comes to things like my um, savings and my investments I was 
combined savings and investment i sent over 21,000 pounds towards my savings and my investments. I sent over 10,000 pounds towards my debt. This surprised me quite a bit. And then the rest of it, which I think was over 26,000 pounds, went towards variable expenses. <sighs> yes, so variable expenses ate more um, than I thought but I am not mad about this purely because I looked further into the numbers and realized that of that 7,000 went towards my uh, tithe and give which I'm a Christian I believe in giving so I was happy to have sent 7,000 pounds towards tithe and giving uh, so this is given to family members this is given to the church this is given to my community people on the street all of that uh, added up to just over seven thousand pounds groceries believe it or not it was and i say only two thousand five hundred but there were months where i thought i was actually going to spend a lot more but i spent two thousand five hundred across the year on groceries but then again this is for a lone person so um for couples or for families definitely it's going to be more but for myself obviously i hosted every single month i have family members over that which affects my budget some weeks i'm spending 50 pounds on my groceries some weeks i'm spending 100 depending on who i uh, i have around so yeah i'm actually very impressed by this but the most expensive one that i could see was that i spent over ten thousand pounds on travel and I actually had to sit with this for a moment and sit with myself and think about this because I was like 10,000 pounds is a lot of money it is but I put this down because that entire under 30k that I spent on variable expenses that all went to me living my life so my four walls were covered and my debts were covered my savings and my investments I'm investing for the future and short term as well all of that was covered after that, I still had all of this additional income that I was able to send towards living my life. So even though it was a lot, I'm not going to lie, I'm still happy that I was able to send that towards something that makes me happy. You know, fin finances, personal finance, obviously, firstly, are personal, but also I am glad that I'm not just looking at, you know, what my life is going to look like when I retire, God willing but i'm also trying to live that life now as well i don't want to wait until i'm 65 before i could travel the world and do things i'm doing that right now so i'm quite happy about that and yeah so you guys that is my 2023 annual budget overview and I am just super super excited actually before I completely finish off with this video I just wrote down like what my annual income goal for 2024 um, I wanted to look like so I want to literally combine from my 95 rental properties and my businesses I want to bring in at least a hundred and forty K um, this year from all of my sources and then my stretch goal that I've put in here is 150 K that's what I'm putting as a stretch goal so you know I gotta put it out there to the universe so the universe knows what I am aiming for for this year but that is it that is my 2023 annual budget overview looking at how much i brought in against what i budgeted and exactly how much i spent i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you've also taken a moment to look at your own budget looking at what you planned if you planned anything or if you didn't looking at what happened in 2023 where your money went and then making goals for 2024 on what you would like to see and where you would like to spend your money and stuff like that but yeah thank you so much for watching my video you guys and i'll see you in my next video